501, which is located towards the middle of the train. On behalf of Go Transit and the rest of today's operating crew, we'd like to thank you for riding with us and we hope you enjoy your trip. Our first station stop today will be Exhibition. Exhibition Station. Merci d'avoir choisi Go. It is April 8th, 2024, and we're on a path that I took on one of my popular vlogs in Niagara Falls, exploring Clifton Hill. It's a different vlog entirely today, as it is, of course, total eclipse day here in Niagara Falls. So. We're here to capture the event. It's not looking so great so far as there is plenty of cloud cover and you can't even see the sun right now, but we're promised it's gonna appear at some point. It doesn't look so great, but we're gonna give it a shot nonetheless. Wanted to get down to Fort Erie, but it is a little bit complicated to get down there. Um, there is the best viewing points for the eclipse at, in that town itself. And also I think a plethora of great viewing spots along the river or Niagara River Basin. Uh, or area where Lake Erie feeds into the Niagara River. That all being said, we're here. We're gonna go explore Clifton Hill, find out what all the action's about because there's a lot of special events being organized around this day. We'll do a quick explore of that. And we're probably gonna come back here because even though there is a lot of tree cover, this is an excellent location to view everything. Let's check it out. Eclipse Day, Niagara, 2024 only time it'll happen in my lifetime. So you notice that a lot of people are waiting to go down to the falls, including this group here, as all the attractions are fairly busy. Well, I noticed that it is uh, our official lock bridge in Niagara Falls, as you can see, uh, which they'll probably have to stop soon because of all that rusting underneath that no doubt will compromise the structure at some point. Niagara Falls is preparing and so is the American side. As you can see, there's quite a little jam going on over there. Prospect Point, or as I believe it's called, it's been two years since I was over there. It's probably the best spot to watch and there's certainly a few people over there now. I wouldn't say this is a great spot to watch, but it is a great spot to just get a general view of the falls. And this is probably the maximum that you're gonna pay for this event, 80 bucks. Not so bad for, say, seeing Billy Joel in Boston, which is 75, American. Don't ask me why, other than I was there. I'm not so sure whether or not the weather is gonna cooperate with the eclipse today, but there are definitely a lot of positive people here looking forward to the event. Now, had I been more intrepid and better planned, I would have been up in the Skyland Tower for this event. But as you'll notice, there are some premium prices for this event. Now we are T-minus two hours-ish, or a little more than two hours from when the first partial eclipse or first contact occurs, around 2 p.m. So we'll have a stroll through my favorite haunt here, Clifton Hill of Niagara. Check out all the festivities and what they've prepared. And then we'll loop back to my special location, which I have sort of uh, isolated as the best spot personally for me to check out the event, which hopefully the clouds will clear and allow us to see. If the clouds don't clear, I don't have to worry about the fact that I have no glasses. All right, it's Eclipse, Niagara Falls, 2024.
a million people were expected in Niagara Falls for this event and because of that they declared a state of emergency. Now here we are the day of. It doesn't look like there's nearly a quarter of that here but we'll see when it gets closer to we might that might change soon enough. Now it is about two hours away before the actual event begins when the first contact actually happens and the sky starts to darken. But as you can see with the sky behind me, it's not exactly cooperating. So fingers crossed in two hours, as per the forecast, it will clear up in time for the event. All right, let's go to Clifton Hill. Check out everything that's going on here for Eclipse 2024, Niagara Falls. Well, we're about an hour and a half away from first contact, actually a little over an hour. I have to say that it is not that busy here. I was expecting a absolute uh, crazy amount of people and a crazy amount of, uh, you know, this basically this town being overtaken by tourists, but it hasn't happened. All you've got is people illegally parking in various spots to avoid the 40 to 50 dollar or 75 if for some reason you want to park at Falls View charge to park here. I think it's really going to kind of be more of an atmospheric visit for you guys today. There's nothing really to narrate. Uh, yeah, the moon's going to cover the sun. So what have I got to say? I'm not an astronomer. So certainly I'm not even an astrologer. So uh, yeah, let's just check it out and see what all the excitement's about. If the clouds will clear about, it's getting close. It's not looking good. See what happens. Hey, how are you? <laughs> Welcome to the 
We might have to actually have a beer. He caught us. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Guilty pleasure confession that this is actually one of my favorite bars in Niagara Falls. It's just fun. Uh, you know, you don't really come here with many expectations, but it's a vibe. And they have a very devoted karaoke following at this bar too, including my good wife, who's sung quite a few hits at this particular location. When I do my bar crawl vlog, which is two years in the making, you'll certainly see this highlighted, because the beer garden is one of my favorites without question. So much so that we'll probably be coming back here after the eclipse. In fact, we definitely will be. Because, um, you know, you've got Pizza Pizza and some great places to eat. And just so you know where we are, there's Clifton Hill. So let's go back inside. And uh, enough of me, more atmosphere. Let's check out Niagara Eclipse vlog carrying on. I do have one thing I should mention, and we're going to capture it while I'm in the heart of the hill here. And it's obviously noisy, but it is, as you can see, not as busy as you would expect for, say, just a normal day here in Niagara Falls. But the real thing that I wanted to point out, unfortunately, is that people are definitely using this event as an opportunity, uh, obviously to sell glasses, that's fine, I have no problems with that. But the problem that I have is that there's some political uh, sort of you know, what do you want to call it? Manipulations or suggestions or people are promoting sort of political causes and other sort of global events and stuff that's going on right now, which I don't think is really the place for it here right now. Um, yeah, this is a family event. There's a million people coming. Part of the reason why it's going to be fun to come here is because you're, we're going to get some street walking of Clifton Hill. No traffic for the first time as they've just closed the street. Getting ready for the big event. Uh, and as I said, if it's any basic, uh, if you can have any basic judgment on how busy it's going to be, you can see on the American side there's still not that many people over there either. So. It looks like everybody's kind of chilling and predicting as per the clouds that are still here. To quote Bjork, a state of emergency is where I want to be. And uh, yeah, we're going into it now. So let's see what we got. I'm expecting big things from the darkness if, it, uh, if that's all we're going to get today. Guys are spreading their message all the way to the falls as they are following the crowd as are we as I'm about to acquaint you with the washroom facilities here at Eclipse 2024 uh, you'll see if we can get some pictures or video of the shirts that are going around uh, they're pretty tacky and uh, yeah, you won't be seeing any on me. I also don't believe in merch. That's why you'll not see any merch on this channel uh, pending some sort of corporate takeover. I have to make a bold prediction as we're only like an hour and a half away from the, well, an hour away from the first event. We're all gonna be disappointed. The clouds are just too many. Uh, those that have glasses, well, uh, I hope that uh, you didn't spend too much on it. Because I'm going to say it right now, is that there are going to be clouds during the eclipse. So we're going to see some darkness, which will be cool. But I don't think we're going to see an actual eclipse because, uh, yeah, the clouds are just too heavy. And looking off into the horizon, I just don't see any breakup. As you can see, the portalettes have all been set up here, trying to get sure no one coming out of any.
Unfortunately, we are now only 20-ish minutes away from the first contact or event. And as you can see behind me, tons of clouds. So it's a little bit of a cloud dead situation, unfortunately. Clouded, cloud dead. You know what that refers to. Uh, you know my musical tastes. Um, 
But yeah, unfortunately, it looks like we're gonna get maybe in an hour's time, if this area in the background kind of reaches us, uh, it looks a little bit clearer, but people are kind of like getting excited when they see the sun come out for just a moment because yeah, it's not looking great right now. Okay, we are roughly a few minutes away from the first event. As you can see, we can't see anything. The sun is barely visible. Somewhere up there is the sun. Got some jet action going on next door. Two of them, as a matter of fact. Those aren't jets, those are observant planes. They still look like military craft, though. It's definitely getting darker. Definitely noticing the temperature dropping like rapidly. And we have about 40 minutes before the eclipse, but at least the total eclipse is done. So yeah, it's definitely becoming noticeable despite the cloud cover, which is not giving up. Unfortunately, you can see behind me, is really kind of going to continue on. Kind of see it because we're in a weird spot, but there it is. It's getting close. I feel like, yeah, we're not in an ideal spot, but the trees kind of add some effect to it. Okay, we are about 25 minutes from total eclipse. And as you can see, we have moved. Main reason why, oh, hold on for a second. Something has made an appearance. You gotta look up and then it's gone before you know it. Yes, yeah, so we're on route now. We're gonna go up a level up to Falls View as uh, the view of the eclipse will be better up there anyway. Okay, we are playing with time. As you can see, it is getting dark. And uh, actually, there's a cloud break about to hit. So we have to get on the other side of this casino before that happens in order to see the action. Hopefully we get there in time. This is incredible. I'm shaking, man. This is amazing. 
We may not see the eclipse, but you can see that this entire area has just gone completely dark. Unbelievable. This is unreal, man. You can't even see the falls, they haven't illuminated them, which is probably a good idea. Honestly, I've been flabbergasted. This is unbelievable. Now it's gonna to start to get bright, so I'm gonna to try to capture as much of this as I can. cheering so there might be something coming. <laughs> Look at his time. This is simply unbelievable man. We got lanterns going up. Oh Oh. For a second there was an eclipse. Oh, we might see it. Wow. It just completely brightened up. Oh, you can see it up there now, yeah. Just a hint of it. Trying to keep as steady as I can because I had to switch up on the camera here. But uh, And everywhere around us, it's starting to brighten up now. Almost don't want to pull away. And the last, as you can see. We are back into daylight. And you can see the moon now slowly creeping away. I will admit though that that was exactly the show that we needed. Despite the cloud cover, we got pretty much as good of a spectacular as we could. The only problem is that we didn't get any uh, stars in the sky. And that is it. It's still pretty much covered. Everybody on the American side of the falls are on their way back home and everybody down here on this side of the falls as well is now clearing out to hit traffic on the way back home. All right, well that's it. Everything's done now. Uh, the eclipse is still happening, but gradually it'll just get brighter to the regular part of the day. It'll be almost not noticeable, but not as uh, extreme as that event I kind of feel a bit shaken because that was really a once-in-a-lifetime experience and I'm very glad that I did not miss the opportunity when I was in bed at 5 in the morning contemplating whether or not to come down here to do because it was absolutely worth it and I'm very glad I did it even with the cloud cover we got enough of a show to actually make it worthwhile for everyone in fact I think it was a very fantastic show like I said briefly earlier we missed say stars in the sky but it is in the golden horseshoe here so I don't think we would have seen that much um, per se uh, it would have been a nice effect 
but uh, maybe an eclipse somewhere else another day for something like that. But as far as this one's concerned, I'm just going to show you uh, everyone kind of wrapping it up and heading out from the area, um, and we'll just wrap it up with just the atmosphere of that for you. But overall, how do you review an eclipse? It was sensational. Definitely worth it. Can't believe that I had the opportunity to do it in a place that I shoot all the time, Niagara Falls. treacherous path with my bad knees. We're doing it. I always love this angle though. It's a cool angle. It's rare that we get an opportunity to actually walk these streets. So that's what we're going to do and reverse our tracks back to Clifton Hill. So make sure you come on back here in one hour as the Boneheads kick off our Total Eclipse concert. In the meantime, thank you all for joining us. Thank you again to the Niagara Symphony Orchestra. You guys be safe. We'll see you in an hour. Thank you.
Okay, we've reached the summit here of Clifton Hill, Victoria Street, Victoria Avenue, sorry. What a day it's been. I almost forgot how chaotic the start of my day was. 5.30 a.m. in bed thinking, nah, I don't think I'm gonna be bothering to get out of bed to go to do this thing. Then actually getting on a bike and riding to my train station and missing the train by literally two seconds as the doors closed just in time to not let me on the train. And then waiting an extra hour to get on the next train for a longer commute here to Niagara. Thus, bumbling plans, but at the same time, the IHOP that I was planning on going to was closed anyway, so maybe it was fate. Then, on the transfer, a bus that I was taking, someone had had an unfortunate incident and the bus had to be evacuated due to sanitation concerns. Okay, so yeah, it's been a quite a rough start. And beyond that, uh, there was more minor, let's say, incidents between that, which is what you would expect for a massive crowd descending upon a city of only 100,000. But alas, it's all done, and now I'm on my way to the train station. At least on that sanitized bus replacement, there was no fare for that particular journey. But uh, it's all done now. It was definitely worth it. So. If you're ever in the uh, area of the world where you're on the fence of actually showing up to do or to witness such an event, I highly recommend it. It was definitely life, one of the greatest things that I've probably witnessed in my lifetime. All right, I think that is a wrap. You're from Niagara. Thanks for dropping in. like sardines. Porty, 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 porty. Portalet, porter, portaloo, port, port, port. Man, this, this is like a special train that's normally not run out of this region, but is for today for obvious reasons.